Okay, well, it's very, very great to see so many people tonight. I've been working with Paul for a long time, uh, going on almost two years now, and I've never seen this many people at the Buddha Bag. So this is a record evening. A whole lot of unfamiliar faces. I always see unfamiliar faces every week because people come, there's different people come for different reasons. Uh, so it's wonderful to see so many people and to be in this, uh, to be in this environment. And especially with a film like this, um, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take about three, three minutes or so to give our thoughts on it, just to kind of open up the discussion. Uh, people are saying they don't have questions, but sometimes when some, you know, when people start speaking and, and throwing ideas out there, you start getting ideas, maybe get a little bit more comfortable, and you can come up to the microphone and just share your thoughts, or if you have questions for any of us up here. We all have different backgrounds, but we're all familiar with energy, and we, we would be familiar with some of these things that you've seen tonight, and in some ways it's difficult to imagine how do you follow up on something like that like what could i possibly say um i'm an intuitive energy healer i'm self-taught so i like to set the example or put it out there that these things can be learned just like the woman said at the beginning and that's very important and it's very self-empowering and i've been studying these things for about 10 years and practicing and having a lot of experience and Again, the thought that, how do you follow up on something like this? I don't want to follow up by repeating anything that I've seen on there, but I do want to point something out. And anyone who's familiar with the Buddha bag has been into the Buddha bag, and they know it's my nature to kind of put a balancing point out there, just for other people who may have thought it. Over the years, I have studied a lot in nutrition, exercise, diet and seeing how very important it is. That's how it started for me. And I got a lot done. But the reality is, at a certain point, I came to realize that I could not do physically any more than what I had done for myself. And that energy, emotions, spirituality were absolutely important for me to take any steps beyond that. So much so that today, I believe that any healing process or any healing that you go through 75% of it is not physical. 25% of it is physical. I still believe in nutrition, I still believe in diet, I still believe in exercise, but that's only 25% of the equation. I've worked with people and tried to encourage people over the years to change their diet, to take supplements, to do exercising, and it, was, it has been one of the most difficult tasks. But when I reverse that, and when I actually started helping people, working with people emotionally and spiritually, to my surprise, a lot of them of their own accord started to change their diets, started to change their activities, take supplements, because when you feel good about yourself, you will make more positive decisions. When you feel bad about yourself, it is easier to make negative decisions. One closing thought that I will say is that there's only so much that you can put in a film. I mean, you, you, have, you have space of two hours, hour and a half, and so you have to stay focused. And I've seen over the years that this genre of films that have been coming out, they're wonderful because they're inspiring and they're very upbeat. But what we are missing, and it was, it was slightly talked about towards the end, it actually was just slightly mentioned, the future of healing has to be placed side by side with the future of disease. We're looking at all these healing modalities, but we need to start asking deeper questions about how we are getting sick to begin with. We're coming up with these healing modalities, and there is a reason behind our illness, just as there is a reason behind all of the healing. The Newtonian physics put us really into a box and really trapped us in our way of thinking. And I think that we have freed ourselves from that but I also think that we have gone from one extreme to the absolute opposite extreme to the point where we don't really take matter and things of that nature into consideration anymore. People don't want to take responsibility. I'll share something interesting because this is the third time that I saw this film at, with different audiences. Every single time that I saw this film, the audience laughed and chuckled at one part. 
And you know what part I'm talking about. The part where you can sit on the sofa and not have to go to the gym. And that's what concerns me. Because for the last 20 years, we have become very complacent and we have been sloppy with our diets, with our exercises, the physical part of it. We've gotten very lax and now we find ourselves in crisis. So I think it's important to remain focused on the fact that I do believe 25% of the healing that we will go through in life is physical and needs to remain physical and that we should not go so far away from Newtonian physics that we completely disregard the physical body. Nutrients, good health are important, exercise is important, and 75% of the equation is just what you saw here tonight. So that's just my thoughts. Pass it over to anyone. <laughs> Hello, I'm Danielle Vierling, and I'm proud to be the sister of Greg Becker, who produced and created the film, um, and also to be a part of um, this wonderful collective present here today, all of you who are interested in energetic healing, and um, that I've been very much involved in it. I 100% believe in the values and the benefits of energetic healing, having both experienced it in my own life and having witnessed it among others, among students and clients of mine as well, um, as a, uh, an energy worker. Synergy Dance and Yoga is based on um, a type of energy healing work called polarity therapy. Um, it's a very integrated, holistic system, and then the, the Synergy Yoga grew out of that. Um, and in, it's a wonderful way um, to do self-healing practice um, in a very lively, fun way, with music, with movement. You don't have to have a background in this, but it's, um, it's for anyone and everyone, men, women, young and old. And um, it's a way to energetically connect with each other as well and to really feel the field, if you like. Um, when, when you're in a, a group, there's a great power when everyone comes together like we are here today and um, there, there's an energy web among us and that's what I really love about the film, that it highlights that um, we're not just individuals in the sense of the Western paradigm and model um, where we're isolated, struggling along to um, fulfill ourselves and, and um, have well-being, but we can help each other along. And um, in my classes and workshops, that's the kind of atmosphere we have. It's not me um, healing you or you know, creating the fact that it's the work we do together. I'm merely a facilitator. Um, and then when we share the energy and we connect, and if one person makes a shift emotionally, um, mentally, or otherwise, it will ripple to everyone within that space at that moment in time. And it's a beautiful thing. The other thing I really loved about the movie was um, the, the point about the heart, that so often we're, we're operating from our heads because that's what this world um, socializes us to do, um, to, to always be operating from here. And the movie shows that the heart is the first receptor and gets the information and then reports back to the brain. And I loved hearing that because that's such validation for the way that I like to, to be and connect in the world and that I, I believe in following my heart. Now, I don't always do it. I'm still working on it. It's not, you know, just because I'm up here doesn't mean I mastered it. But um, that, you know, it's something that I... I um, can go go forward now knowing that there's validation for that and then the movie really gives a lot of validation so i hope you too can find that inspiration thank you hi good evening i'm julie williams and i'm thrilled to see all of you here and also thrilled to see this movie for the third time myself getting new information uh, every time i see it I am a practitioner of consciousness medicine. Everything that is talked about in this movie is what my practice is about, uh, which is called quantum healing. Um, and that's my own method I've, I've developed over the years of collecting certifications in science and NLP, ancestral work, shamanism, energy work, the list goes on. Um, for me, I continue to look for things outside of myself to heal 
inside. And one day I realized that there was nothing outside of myself that could do anything. It was all inside. And that was the biggest learning for me, the biggest healing for me. So as I work in this field, that's what I help people realize. That within yourselves, each and every one of us, we all have the power to get exactly what we want. And that may take some help of a practitioner to shift belief structures, to release ancestral entanglements, release disturbances that might be keeping us from getting what we want. But we all have the capacity within ourselves to achieve what we want. Um, this movie and coming together, this raises the vibration of the awareness of this, having so many hearts and resonance here today seeing this movie. And that um, really excites me from that, that perspective. The, the main impact, I think, that I'd like to communicate from this film as well is to shift over to, instead of a disease-oriented approach, a healing-oriented approach. The allopathic model, while it is the traditional medical model, while it is very, very useful, um, it engages and it, it forms a relationship with disease and diagnosis. Yeah. Whereas if we approach it from a healing perspective, right, instead of the fight against cancer, things like this, not trying to resist or take anything away, but more of a completion and a shifting and a discreating, right, and moving into to what we want. And that's such an important message that I hope that you all got from the movie tonight. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Sarah Bird and I'm delighted to be here and to be asked to speak. Um, I've been a practitioner of energy psychology techniques for 10 years. I've been very fortunate to have met, uh, met Bruce Lipton and Rupert Sheldrake and Lynn McTaggart. Um, I've attended seminars with them and had conversations with them. And I guess the turning point for me was 10 years ago when I was introduced to a technique and uh, a lifelong height phobia disappeared in five minutes. And it was like, mm, okay, where's that gone? And it started a voyage of exploration for me into looking at the different ways that we hold on to um, our thoughts and our beliefs. And I think that a couple of things that I've really learnt from um, people like Bruce Lipton over the years is that we are much more than our physical body. Our physical body is such a small part of us. And we are energy, and we are energetic beings. And if we don't look at that energy side of us and don't include it in how we live our lives, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through using techniques that help us to uh, clear the disturbances in our bodies and our energy fields, we are just missing the part of us that so desperately needs to be looked at to keep us whole. And when I say whole, I mean emotionally, physically and energetically. So Bruce Lipton talks about ourselves um, and controlling our organisms, not our genes. And what he means by that is he discovered a few years ago that our cells respond to the emotional effect of what is going on around us. So how we store these memories in our system is by the emotions. So the emotions is linked to the heart center. So when we experience things, we respond emotionally to them and our energy fields move and expand and contract according to how we are emotionally responding to things. So if you think about it, your thoughts are the things that make your energy fields contract and expand. If you're happy, your energy's all out there. If you're feeling sad and miserable, your energy's in here. So your energy is moving constantly. The only thing that's changing is the thoughts that you hold in your head. So your thoughts, your beliefs, these are information streams. And the information comes in the morphogenic fields that Rupert Sheldrake talks about. So when we are addressing these fields of energy, these morphogenic fields, these energetic fields, we're actually taking ourselves outside of our physical bodies and addressing what's out here. 
So we're now learning that this information is out here in the field and we use our internal antennae to bring this information in. So a lot of the clear senses, our intuition, is just connecting into these fields of energy. And as soon as someone invents something or as soon as someone knows something, that information goes out into these morphogenic fields ready to be picked up. So as more and more people are switched on and become aware, that information field grows and it grows and it gets faster and faster and faster the more people that, um, that become aware of things. So I think that um, a couple of years ago um, I was with a, a conference with Rupert and he was saying that his son had just taken his final A levels. So his son and a group of his friends what they did when they were taking their A-levels, they went into the exams, they waited 15 minutes before they started to answer the exam, so that, that when they started to answer question one, everybody got on to question two, so the information from question one was out there in the field. <laughs> Rupert's son and his five friends all got the highest grade they could get on their exam. So, you yeah, know, that's just one story. <laughs> Which I thought was very interesting. But any of you taking exams, just remember that. <laughs>